You'll often hear coffee nerds, us included, talk about how important your grinder is to the quality of your coffee, and in particular, to the quality of your espresso. When we start talking about why the grinder is so important, the term particle size is very likely to be thrown out within the first few seconds. And it's true, particle size is massively important to the quality of your cup of coffee. Unfortunately, there are a few obstacles when it comes to conveying this importance. One, you can't taste the shots of espresso we're pulling. And two, once you start grinding fine enough, the micron scale changes that make the difference between a great and a terrible cup of coffee all just start to look the same, both to our eyes and to our cameras. Thankfully, there are tools for these things, and we just got one. Today, we'll ignore our pitiful organic eyes and use this fancy particle size analyzer to get an impression of how different grinders, settings, and even coffees can affect your particle size distribution and how it affects your coffee. Fundamentally, the way this thing works is pretty simple. You take a little sample of ground coffee, drop it on this white tray, place the device over top, and hit go. After giving the sample a few vibrations to evenly distribute it, the device then uses its camera and lights to count every tiny particle on the tray and then sorts them by particle size. Within a few seconds, you get both a pie chart and a bar graph. Looking at these, we can see how many of our particles are within each size range. This gives us a pretty precise picture of not just what our average grind size is, but also how concentrated or spread out the entire distribution of particle size is. Generally speaking, a narrower particle size distribution is better. With coffee, we're always trying to precisely control how much we're pulling out of our grounds. It's easier to pull everything out of a bunch of tiny particles than a few large ones. So generally speaking, the narrower our distribution, the more even our extraction can be. With that in mind, let's start looking at some of this delectable data. For our first comparison, let's look at two very different grinders, a Krupp's blade grinder and a Luca Adam burr grinder. I'm pretty confident that I don't need to convince almost anyone watching this video that burrs are better than blades. I'm sure I'm not the only one whose familiarity with the wild random grinding of the blades has led to a long-standing contempt. That said, this inconsistency makes for a great example of what good and terrible particle size distribution looks like. As you can see, even though these grounds look roughly the same size to the eye, the blade grinder has far more particles at both the ultra-fine and coarse ends of the spectrum. This wide spread of particle sizes means that I'll end up with a bunch of particles that are both under and over extracted, resulting in weird muddy flavors. On top of that, I have no meaningfully precise way to adjust the grind for my next shot. Anyway, no big news here, just please don't use a blade grinder for your espresso. Please. Now, we've compared the distribution of a terrible grinder and a great one, but what if we compared the results from one grinder at two very different settings for espresso? For our first sample, I dialed in the Luca Atom for a concentrated 1 to 1.5 ratio shot, and for the second, I dialed it in for a much faster 1 to 3 ratio shot. Looking at the ground side by side, it's still pretty difficult to see any difference, but with our particle size analyzer, we can see in much greater detail. Immediately, you'll notice that the median particle size for our coarser sample has gone up by about 50 microns. This is an incredibly detailed look at what happens when you actually adjust your grind coarser. You're moving the burrs slightly further apart, and so the resulting grind is precisely just a tiny bit larger. You'll often hear coffee people say that bigger burrs are better. There are at least a few big reasons, but the biggest one is that larger burrs generally produce a narrower and better particle size distribution. To see what this looks like, we'll compare grounds from two grinders with different burrs, the Eureka Mignon Zero with its 55mm burrs and the Luca Adam with its 75mm burrs, both dialed in for a 1 to 2 ratio shot. Compared to our previous test with that dastardly little blade grinder, you can see that the difference here is much more subtle. That said, you'll notice our distribution is a little smaller. There's a notable reduction on both the fine and coarse ends of the spectrum. These are astonishingly tiny changes in the size of our grounds, but they make a real difference in the cup. When people talk about wanting 65mm burrs or larger to match cafe quality espresso, these tiny changes are what make that big difference in taste. I know this in principle, and I've had the opportunity to experience the difference with my tongue on many occasions, but to look at the data is still kind of wild. For our last comparison, the endless debate the age-old rivalry that will certainly carry on for millennia to come and leave countless friendships shattered in its wake. Flat burr versus conical burr. Famously, these two different types of burrs can produce pretty different shots, and they do this due to their different particle size distributions. Flat burr with its monomodal distribution centered around a single point, and conical burr with its bimodal distribution with two distinct peaks. To see this difference with our analyzer, we've sampled grounds from both the Luca Adam and the Weber Key. Both of these grinders can produce stellar shots, but you can immediately see there's a difference in the distribution each of them produce. 
We've only been looking at flat burrs up to this point so that bimodal distribution of the key really stands out. So what does this all mean? Well, similar to our refractometer videos earlier, I want to be clear up front. You do not need one of these at home. You can get some really fun data out of them, and that data can also be super useful in a production or cafe environment, but at home, they're total overkill. That aside, what this very simple data shows us is, first of all, that blade grinders suck. More importantly, though, they show us just how precise and sensitive grinders made with espresso in mind need to be. The fact that two shots with completely different brew ratios are separated by just a few tens of microns when it comes to particle size is a testament to just how intense espresso is as a brew method. It's also a testament to just how much effort in design and engineering goes into these grinders, and why we place so much importance on them. This was truly just a general introduction to the idea of particle size. There's definitely a lot more we can learn using this tool, and I look forward to using it in many more experiments to come. I hope this video helped you to better understand and visualize what particle size really means on a slightly more detailed level. If you have any interesting questions you think this thing could answer, let me know in the comments below. For more espresso experiments, tamp subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.